Music in the Cafe, a Lucanette alternate universe month-long fan fiction. Each day will be based on a writing prompt from the Lucanette September 2019 calendar. I do not own this calendar. I will be linking the Tumblr post I found it in in the description box below. Thank you for reading, listening, or watching. Please enjoy. Day 29, Reincarnation. She looks just like you, like a little clone. Luca smiled at his newborn daughter. Could a person actually feel so much love for someone else? Luca thought his heart would explode. She was beautiful. Marie Charlie Kufain. Being a parent, it, it was amazing and magical. And it was in that moment that Luca realized why parents were the way they were. He would do anything to protect this little angel of his. He was 29, and this was the moment that his entire life had been leading up to. Luca Kufain and Marinette, previously do Panchang and now Kufain, had gotten married about four years ago. And to say it was the best day of his life was an understatement. Marinette looked beautiful, and he was basically at tears the entire time. It wasn't a larger extravagant wedding. It was cozy with friends and family, family blubbering for the happy couple. And their honeymoon was in New York of all places, and of course it made more sense to them than anyone else. The long distance relationship worked well for, you know, the eight months that Luca was gone. Marinette oftentimes would visit him, about once a month or so, and that definitely helped things. After completing training, Luca worked with the company to re release a couple songs and he learned all about mixing and backstage production work. He got a lot of good ratings in radio plays. It wasn't like he was a major celebrity overnight. He could walk down the streets without everyone really realizing it. But his social media had thousands of followers and people would sing covers of his songs in parks for tips. Of course, whenever he saw or heard those people, he dropped a couple US dollars, you know, for thanks. It was a surreal experience the f and feeling, you know, being not quite famous, but not quite unknown. He'd heard about it from his mother, but in less extreme conditions. Anarka was mass, so when she was out of costume, she was normal. So that was different because she got a break. But at the same time, she was the guitarist for Jagged Stone, who was one of the biggest and best rock stars out there. She definitely had more of a traditional pop star experience than Luca was feeling, but nevertheless, the stories didn't prepare Luca for it. He played a couple gigs and concerts in New York. People liked to stand and stare and offer tips when he just played his guitar and sang. There were some people that recognized him or his voice that would excitedly text more people to come. He had big crowds coming to concerts, and it was wild to think so many people liked his music so much, they were willing to pay to see it in person. Once he played a concert on a rooftop of a short building. It was the most wild and surreal experience. It was an open concert, so passerbyers could, were st stopped and stared for a couple of minutes before continuing on. Only a few came to join the crowd. After about two months, Luca decided to go back home. Since his name was out, he could figure out what to do then. Giving Mavis a thank you and goodbye and promising to stay in touch with friends he'd made along the journey, Luca booked a one-way ticket back to Paris and excitedly and anxiously went home. Of course, Marinette waited for him at the gate. He was and holding her in his arms the moment he got back was the best feeling in the world. She last visited him two months prior and they were both relieved that the distance and separation was over. No more waiting for FaceTime calls or days and days to see or hear each other's faces and voices. Luca stayed with his mother for a couple weeks before moving in with Marinette. It was just like it was before Luca moved to New York, only better. Before, there was the process of, you know, getting up and getting ready to go to the cafe to see the love of his life. Living with her? It only took a, the opening of his eyes to spot the beautiful woman he got to call his own. Marinette was thriving, too. Her online store had gotten very popular. True to word, Alia made the site look so professional, so professionally made, and every article of clothing had a picture of one of Julika and Kagami's models wearing it. Tiki and Marinette were almost always working hard to keep up with the demands, so much so they had to start hiring another team. It was smaller than the staff at the cafe, but a team nonetheless to lighten the load. 
Although it was sad that Marinette could never live out for her full dream of having an actual boutique in real life. Having the store online made her feel happy and accomplished. She stopped her keeping her identity a secret, and soon more and more Parisians found out that she was the owner of the wildly popular and trendy store named Red Off the Record. They all praised her, much to her surprise for running two successful businesses at only age 22. Luca had decided to start uploading music to Spotify. It ended up being a very good idea. Many of his previous fans flocked to follow him and listen to his songs on repeat. A lot of new view listeners came aboard, finding his songs on weekly playlists and just by hitting shuffle. More and more people urged him to start a YouTube channel, and eventually he did. Slowly he shifted to vlogging and music, and people were really loving it. It was definitely working for his lifestyle, it not being a desk job, and he could stay home more and, and hang out with Marinette while she sewed. People thought they were the most adorable couple ever and cooed over them as much as his mother did. Luca released more and more music, dabbling in different genres and bringing, up, bringing in so many fans. The want for gigs and concerts started to reach a high in Paris, and he started to do just that. He did a concert every few months and enjoyed doing what he called a surprise concert, which was basically where he set up in a park and just performed for everyone around him. It was so fun to see the joy on people's faces when he started playing their favorite song. It made him love what he was doing even more. There were multiple occasions where someone came to him and said that his music helped them in some way, and it warmed his heart to know that he was able to help and touch people without even knowing it. After two years and a move into a bigger house, Luca asked Marinette to marry him, and happily she said yes. Thus started the planning of the wedding. It was crazy. The planning, of course, wasn't hard. Luca was a previous event planner, so it was easy to plan out and get everything figured out. The wild and unreal part was the fact that he was planning his wedding. Luca was so excited to marry Marinette. She really was the love of his life and soulmate. They decided to have a spring wedding, since they met in the spring. It was a beautiful outdoor setting. Many people were tearing up and overjoyed for the happy couple. The sight of Marinette in that white dress was the only only thing that made him realize that yes, he was getting married to the most wonderful woman he had ever met. Somehow, four years down the line, Marinette and Luca decided to have kids and that was that's when the rivaling best day of his life happened. Marie was very small, but still healthy. Right now she was sleeping in her mother's arms after a feeding and her parents were cooing at her. She's absolutely perfect, Marinette breathed with a smile, rocking the small bundle of joy. She looked up at her husband, his fingers grasped by Marie's tiny hand. I think she'd make a great big sister, he mused with a laugh. Marinette giggled and playfully rolled her eyes. Maybe in two years, she said. And maybe this time we can have a boy, a reverse of me and Julica, Luca thought out loud. Marinette nodded. That would be adorable, like a reincarnation of you two. I just hope neither of them get your relentless humor of teasing me, Marinette laughed. Luca cocked his head to a side. Would it be that so bad, are kids teaming up with me to take you down? He asked with a playful smile. Marinette raised a brow at him. What do you think? She asked. Luca looked over to the right of the nursery. There was a huge pile of gifts from friends, family, co-workers, and even fans. What are we going to do with that many baby bottles, he said. Marinette shrugged, or as much so as she could with the sleeping baby on her chest. Getting up and off the love seat, Luca walked over to the pile and inspected it. Oh my god, who got a stroller? Luca said flabbergasted. Taking a better look at it, he realized it was a very expensive stroller. Why would someone get them one? They already had one even before Marie was born. It was common on baby registries, and he hadn't seen this giant, gigantic box before today, so who would ever drop it off? Ah, oh, Marinette sighed. Agrest sends his best wishes, she finished. Oh, that made way more sense. Who else would spend so much on a stroller for a baby that wasn't even theirs, if not the most one of the most wealthy people in Paris? He had it dropped off early in the morning. Explains why I never saw it. Marinette nodded. 
Was it mildly unnerving for Luca to know that his wife's only ex-boyfriend of six years was still madly in love with her? Yes. Yes, it was. Was it enough to make him flying off the make him go flying off the rails and do something irrational? No. No, it was not. For a multiple of reasons, he understood Adrian. Luca knew he'd never be able to stop loving Marina even if something happened. He also appreciated that Adrian never once tried to overstep borders and win her back. He only sent her tokens of his love and gestures such as the stroller. It was an annoying fact of his life, but it didn't bother him much. Luca was the one to marry her and start a family, not Adrian, so he had nothing to worry about. Luca? Yes? She needs to be changed. It's your turn. Fine.